11,000 years ago, roughly, was the beginnings of agriculture. Population growth, you began to get more populous societies in some parts of the world. With populous societies, you then got increasing political centralization, for which anthropologists have a whole series of terms. But it's not the case that traditional, on the one hand, it's not the case that traditional societies are frozen models of humans 60,000 years ago, because there have been 60,000 years of stuff that's happened since 60,000 years ago. A New Guinea friend of mine says, said to me, Jared, really you shouldn't talk about traditional societies, but transitional societies, because all of these so-called traditional societies left in the modern world, like in New Guinea and the Amazon, they've all been influenced to varying degrees by modern society. And all four of these studies surveying the information in the past came to the same conclusion that on the average, with various exceptions, levels of violence in the past were higher than today, expressed by the following statistic, the percentage of people who died violent deaths. Now, when you say that, immediately, 10 years ago, I would have rebelled at that as obscenely untrue, because we are living in the century of Hiroshima and Dresden and Hamburg, when at a push button or in two nights, or Tokyo, where in two nights you can kill 100,000 people without seeing them in the face. So there's no doubt that modern societies achieve far higher death tolls, but then they have far higher populations to, to kill. What count, the measure of violence is the percentage of people who die violent deaths. And there the evidence is clear that traditional societies, on the average, with exceptions, have a high percentage of people dying violent deaths than even the most violent modern societies like Germany and Russia during the 20th century. And the reasons become understandable, but the fact remains that, let's take one of the worst of the worst. Germany in the 20th century was at war from 1914 to 1918 and 1939 to 1945, and was not at war the rest of the time, so that during the World Wars, Germany suffered horrendous death totals of a couple million of people. But then it had another 91 years without those death tolls. Whereas in traditional societies, they are almost chronically at war because there's not a there's not a mechanism for imposing peace. There's not a centralized government that can restrain the hotheads. This is a case where to bring the advantages of traditional societies with all their diversity into modern societies with all their diversity. An individual alone can't do much. It takes collective action. But in fact, there is collective action going on in the restorative justice movement. There's a lot of experiment going on. At, at what stage should restorative justice set in? Should it set in before the criminal has been condemned, or should it set in already at the stage when the criminal is charged but not condemned? Um, it's clear that it works in some cases, but not in other cases. If the, the accused does not want to participate in restorative justice, but he's forced to do it, it's of little benefit. So there's a lot of experiment going on. But this, then, is an example in, in Chapter 2 of areas where learning from traditional societies requires collective action.